Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa atiyullah wa atiyah rasul wa ulul amri minkum And always a reminder for myself Ana abdukul ajis wa da'ifu wa miskinu zalimu jahal And by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and we took a path in which to be nothing. Alhamdulillah a reminder that we're in the month of Safar, the second lunar month of 12 months and under the authority of the reality of the power of nine and that the nine represents a sultanat, the highest power, the highest authority. And then Allah stamped His servants with eight and one and one and eight on their hands. They have a one and in the Arabic eight, and on left hand eight and one. And eighty-one and eighteen is ninety-nine that we're under the tajalli of ninety-nine names of Allah and that the eight will uphold the throne of one. And our life is to be of service to uphold the throne of oneness. And in this way of nine and in the way of the knowledge of awliyaullah, the second lunar month opens nine times two and the power of eighteen and the realities of the power of eighteen. And that brings us to Surat Al-Kahf where Qur'an is Allah's uncreated Word guiding all of creation. Willing and unwilling, known and unknown doesn't make a difference for Allah People come and say they're not going to make hajj but they are making hajj because Allah made the earth to succumbulate the light of the sun. That's a hijrah around light because the reality of the Kaaba is a light and that which represents eternity and your life is to circumambulate eternity. And Allah makes the entire inhabitants of the earth circumambulate that which is eternal in our symbol which is the sun. It is a sign of eternity, haqq. And then Allah said, in your lowest form of your atoms and your nucleus, I made them to also make hajj. I made your electrons to circumambulate your nucleus. Because the new Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nucleus is a positive and eternal energy and the electrons are negative. So everything is submitting to Allah It's just us that's in the middle, the nafs, that says yes and no. But Allah doesn't care for that. Means Allah's will, God's will shall always be done, willing or unwilling. In this reality of nine moving into eighteen, the month of Safar is the Qur'an dressing us and blessing us bringing us into this cave of reality of Ashab al-Kahf, the companions of the cave. And we discussed in the last week a continuous reminder for myself that to run from badness, run from difficulty, run from that which will take us away from the worshipping of the oneness of the Divine and run to the cave of rahmah and mercy. And our life is about entering into that cave and that God promises in that cave, I'll dress you from a rahmah and a mercy and I'll set your affairs to be straight, to be good. 
And we said before that material people think, oh Shaykh I can't do these things, I have so much of my material world that I have to run for, take care of. And Allah's promise is that, run to the cave, we'll set your affairs to be straight, to be good, to be right. And awliyaullah come into our lives and teach us, the one whom controls the world or has been given an authority in the world of light, controls the world of form, has an authority over the world of form. But the one whom holds the world of form is an empty hold and holds nothing, there's no eternity on that. So the one whom struggles to find their authority only in the world of manifestation that they struggle for just achieving a hierarchy within the dunya, they become losers to akhirah because all their focus was on that. But the reality of spiritual practices is Allah said, no way you don't run towards the authority of your light. Run to the reality of your light, true enlightenment and empowerment, the one whom reached to the realities of light. That's such a high authority that Allah says that once you've been authorized in the world of light that already is all encompassing in the world of form. So the one who controls inside has power of the outside. The one who only has outside he has nothing inside so it's a fake power. Zahukan Allah says when the truth comes falsehood perishes, falsehood by its nature is crumbling, it has no glue, has nothing to hold. The reality of our spiritual practices give our physicality a strength. So the one whom sitting and trying to lift and lift and lift and make themselves stronger than a donkey which they can't because they don't even have the physicality of an ox, you can't be stronger than a bull. You're putting all your effort, 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 make yourself big, big out of the de desire of thinking you have strength. But physical strength has nothing and the one whom builds their spiritual strength they can take that person down in a second with just a du'a, with just an energy. The one whom has spiritual strength has an eternal strength of hikmah and wisdom. So it's not even a comparison for the people and that's just an analogy because they teach by analogy. Lifting, 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 making physicality strong but in the end it's actually empty. And as they grow older they become sicker because of what they put upon a strain and difficulty upon their bodies. But the one whom built their spirituality as they grow older their spirituality is becoming more powerful, more enlightened, more energized. Their power has the ability to encompass all outside powers. So means the Ashab al-Kaf and Allah giving for now to apply that now is don't worry about your physicality, don't run for only the physical authority but make sure that your inner reality is powered, your inner reality is energized, that you reach to the authority of the world of light. Just like the world of form has its degrees and its diplomas, its security clearances, you work in a company they want to know who you are, they do background check, they do security check, a credit check, then they give you an ID and say, you can come into this building. And Allah says, oh for us it's much harder, spend your time building your credentials within the world of light. That you have a security check, you have a character check, you have all of these practices of building and what Allah wants from a good character, akhlaq. That if the character is good, the spirituality and the practices are good, the selflessness and the willingness, the willingness of wanting to serve other than being served, they want to be of service, they want a life in which to be selfless and when they practice and they discipline themselves with that reality then Allah begins to open for them these oceans of authority and Divinely Qudra. And we described that in this cave Allah draws our attention 
to the reality of hearing. That we seal upon the sleepers of the cave their hearing. And that was last night's discussion that for somebody to enter into this state of Divine power and Divine grace they must have control over hearing. Where it's the opposite, everyone thinks that they must have control over seeing. Why if you're going to go into deep reality why you don't focus on seeing? Because Allah is drawing our secret and our attention is actually no it's your hearing. If the hearing doesn't open and the discipline of hearing doesn't open the si eyes will be completely corrupt and they cannot be trusted what those eyes see because there's no discipline upon the hearing. So anyone who wants their spiritual eyes to open they have to have cleared the discipline of hearing and the war is on the hearing of mankind. That's why you see the devices, that's why you see the earpods, that's why you see the level of music and entertainment is so low and so bad. Why? To bring the vibration down what we talked last night. If the focus and the reality is hearing, now this is quantum, right? So quantum came back is the study of light and I know the kids were asking me about what's that? Quantum entanglement and destinies and manifesting and how to make something manifest. This is all the reality of why Allah just said we put a parda upon their ear. So that later times people would make a tafakkur and contemplation and the people of science they know this now. They understood when they studied a form and they said there's got to be more to this form then they found atoms. Then they studied the atoms and they found was it bosoms or light, sparkling different lights which they named. Then they studied the light and then they found strings and vibrations, means energy. An energy is producing a sound, a sound is manifesting a light and all these lights are allowing a form to manifest. From what? From a sound. So the one whom has understanding of sound has an understanding of the form. The one who can bring your sound down can destroy your form, the one who can bring your sound up can raise your form, simple formula. So shaitan, no sound, evilness, no sound. Bad people, bad energies, they know sound. If they want to hit you they just begin to make a sound that's low and bring the sound low, the vibration to be low. The characterisms to be bad, the backbiting, the bad character, the bad movies, the bad sounds. Why is it coming? To destroy your form. Your form is collapsing, you're becoming sick from it, you're becoming diseased by it. And they know, the kids were, were, were talking about the sound, they say when Beethoven was writing he was at 1425 megahertz. And they said that when they compose at 1425 megahertz people feel an ecstasy. They said there's certain families that control these industries said that actually everything by law has to be put on the radio at 430 megahertz. Why? Because they found that at that vibration everything feels good, sounds good. The sounds have an enlightening an energetic effect upon people. At 4.30 it agitates the heart and the soul and the being of people and that's an energy attack. That industry is based on destroying souls, based on destroying your form. Anything they produce is based on that very low vibration that causes a difficulty within the physicality of humans. So it's immense, this immense reality, immense reality for the perfection of insan and that every knowledge and reality of what I should do, I should do and, and would have done should be based on energy, 
is what I'm doing going to improve my energy or what I'm doing is going to lower my energy. And that we left off last night in the depth of the sciences of sound and the reality of hearing and for ourselves to contemplate its effect, contemplate the importance of hearing, contemplating the importance of energy and how I'm going to lift my vibration in life to defend myself from every attack or every difficulty, every type of sickness and every type of ignorance. While the overwhelming effect that's on this dunya is to lower my vibration, lower my health, lower everything and to bring my being to be disarmed. Fear is the greatest lowering of energy. So all these of what we went through of two years of uncontrolled fear was designed to destroy the energy of people, designed to destroy the reality and the life of the soul of people. Means then the practice of energy, the understanding of energy, the, the understanding on how to protect and shield oneself with sound and vibration then becomes immensely important in the last days. We pray that Allah dress us from its understanding, bless us from its understandings and that people begin to ponder, how can I build my energy? How can I build my sound? How can I protect the sound and encase myself in a protective shield of sound? Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.